Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for, this really is a special edition of the show. Um, so, where are the wine bottles? Why do I have a bottle of pinch over here to the side and a Pepsi and what's that? What's this? All right, so um, this is a weird episode. Uh, first of all, you know I don't normally do product reviews. So first of all, Yes, this is a product review for the purposes of any contracts or agreements that I have with somebody. This is a product review. This product was sent to me by the company Alcomate, um, or actually by a representative from them, and they wanted to have me take a look at it. Now, this is gonna be, in real time, about two hours. But we'll be fast forwarding through a lot of this. But I'm not gonna like stop. I'm, you're gonna see every the whole process of me just sitting around watching TV. This is why I recorded last week's episode on the couch, so I could watch TV <laughs> and for a couple hours instead of just sitting at the table going, okay, and then surf the web or something stupid, right? Um, and I'm just using what's natural lights coming from the outside and the light coming from above and over there. I probably should turn that light on, but it's too late now. Um, so over the course of a couple hours, it might get a little dark. We'll I'll have to like adjust some lighting here because it's like 4.30, almost 4.40 in the afternoon. Um, so in about an hour, it's going to be dark outside. So there's not going to be a lot of ambient light coming in. So it's just going to be the light over here and then whatever light's coming from the television. So it's not going to be, I'm not saying I had the most professional lighting setup or you know white balance and contrast and exposure but you're going to see over the course of the two hours that we're going to record or however long i need to take that it might the lighting will get messed up so um i'll, I'll look a little bit different by the end of the day let's see so what are we doing here so this company uh contacted me god during the summer actually and I put it off, I put it off, I put it off, and, and the person that was representing them at the time was kind of, was kind of you know, persistent in getting me to respond, because I didn't respond, you know, yes or no, that I would re review this product. And when I finally said, you know what, I'll review it. Uh, that person was left, <laughs> the person left the company, somebody else came along. So the thing with reviewing this product, I mean, it's, it's a breathalyzer, okay? is that this is not a wine, this is a wine show. I mean, I've reviewed other products, other things that are not wine. I've reviewed some wine related things, you know, I've done interviews and all that. But I'm not sure I really wanted to do a breathalyzer and actually review it because in my mind, the proper way for me to review this is to get drunk on camera, which I've never done for the show. Um, I mean, I've had some pictures of me drunk, you know, uh, out and about over the years. I think everyone has. Um, if they drink alcohol, you've been out at a club or a party and you got shwasted and you have pictures of yourself that way. So, but I've never on camera like gotten drunk. That's why, especially when I record multiple episodes in one day, I spit every time. Yes, I have some episodes like Halloween. I, a lot of times I don't spit on the Halloween, but I'm not getting drunk on those shows. Um, but it's more to try to promote a uh, responsible um responsible alcohol now another thing about my past the probably probably uh more recent viewers don't know but people who've watched since the beginning or who watched right after the hiatus ended is that i did get into some legal trouble so if i had one of these this would have been very nice so um so in a way i'm kind of glad i i got asked to do this because I got a freebie, basically. This is like, oh, damn it, I should have, I should have looked at how much this stuff is. I think it's like 200 bucks. Um, 
but I have time to look all that up because we're going to be watching TV. So anyway, um, I believe it's around $200. I'll, in the lower third, it will have it by now because I will have looked it up. But um, So this is a portable breathalyzer. Now, uh, this is the box that comes in. There's a little carrying case that you get with it um, so you can store it wherever. But um, it's got a... It's got a little actual carry in case I didn't take out of the packet. You got your little section here for this. Then you have multiple mouthpieces. They're all individually uh, wrapped. And um, this is where you, and they give you two AAA batteries. So you already, sorry, you already get the batteries with it. You don't have to buy them, but they're AAA, which I actually have some. Um, and what I did, I tested this earlier just to make sure it worked and it said zero. And then I don't know, about 10, 15 minutes after I recorded the Thanksgiving episode, I tested it again, zero which it should have because I really hadn't ingested any alcohol, though technically there's a little bit of alcohol in my system because it's gonna, it's gonna pass through the, my mouth, right? My gums and all that. So, but I'd taken a little, you can't really put this in like that, so I put it where the AA batteries go. Kind of convenient, it fits in there, kind of. So, but you got a little thing, you can keep it in your car, or you can keep it at home or whatever. If you have a bar and you want to have something you can use, I mean, granted, um, you know, unless you're going to sterilize the uh, mouthpieces, you know, I can't, you know, unless you, or, or maybe you can buy a bunch of these mouthpieces from these guys. I don't know, but you could have it at a bar. So, um, so I thought I'd try it out. So what, what does alcohol do uh, to the body? Um, now, those of us that have been in the industry for a long time, um, I did not mean to, I did not mean to, uh, there we go do that with the recliner i will in a little bit when it's time to watch tv so alcohol so those of us in the industry usually have to go through some type of alcohol uh responsibility training so that we can recognize when somebody um is drunk and you shouldn't serve them anymore because um, almost every state has some type of law that makes it illegal to serve somebody who is intoxicated. Intoxicated means they've reached the level of intoxication, uh, the, the legal level. Intox that's what intoxication actually means in a legal sense. I mean, drunk, whatever you want to call it. I mean, but somebody could not be at that legal limit and still be called drunk or intoxicated. We'll go. We'll get to that a little bit. Um, but anyway, so uh, as you drink alcohol. It gets into your system, it absorbs, you know, it gets absorbed in your stomach, but mainly gets absorbed in through your intestine, through your small intestine. That's where the majority of it comes from, or, you know, gets absorbed. Um, as you, as your body processes it, once it gets absorbed, it goes into your bloodstream, hits your brain. That's where all of your, you know, why you act stupid and fall down and all black out or whatever. But your liver handles all the um, processing of it. So there's enzymes in there. I'm not going to go through the whole what enzymes are, but there's enzymes. First of all, the enzymes in your stomach, but there's enzymes in your liver that uh, take the alcohol and through a couple different processes, processes basically break it down to vinegar, okay? Um, and then it gets flushed to your kidneys, and then you get rid of it. Um, now, as far as <clears throat> other processing of alcohol, uh, besides your liver, your liver handles anywhere from 90 to 95 percent of all that. The rest of it happens through urination and um, or sweating and breathing. I'm sorry, through sweating and breathing and through other excremental ways of doing it. Um, let's see here. So first of all, <clears throat> with the test, now it's like I said, it's now 4:46. Uh, ate lunch at around 12ish. I could eat right now. I kind of feel a little hungry. So I looked up how long does it take for your stomach to empty? Um, and it can take anywhere from two to four ish hours. Um, so I can take, well, 50% of the stomach can be emptied from two and a half to three hours. And um, uh, the total empty in the stomach takes about four to five hours. Um, I mean, there actually has been studies how long it takes you to go through the whole um, digestive thing. If, you, if you're curious, from one end to the other can take anywhere from 30 to 40 hours. So, you know, just because you had White Castle last night doesn't mean that you got, yeah. Anyway, um, though it seems to work out that way. Uh, anyway, it was more, honestly, in, in, in 
I don't mean to get into the, all of the grossy, the gross stuff, but if you if you did go out have a night of drinking and you hit White Castle and then the next day you got the bubble guts, it wasn't from the White Castle. It's from the alcohol. Okay, um, so I can close that little thing. All right, so <clears throat> let's uh, hit the hit the um, book of knowledge. So uh, alcohol is removed from the bloodstream by a combination of metabolism, metabolism, excretion, and evaporation. Uh, typically, 95% is metabolized by the liver. The remainder through breath, urine, sweat, feces, milk, milk. And then think about that until I read it in saliva. Um, as far as like through your kidneys, it takes about 40 minutes for that to start. Um, whereas metabolism con commences as soon as the alcohol is absorbed and even before alcohol levels have risen in the brain. Um, it's metabolized by a group of six enzymes called alcohol dehydrogenase, and we'll go through all those, but um, it, it basically converts into uh, non-toxic acetic acid. Let's see here. Um, so uh, when alcohol is metabolized, uh, I'll, I'll just kind of read this. It sounds a little technical, and I'll try to explain it in English after I do that. Uh, many physiologically active materials are removed from the bloodstream, whether by metabolism or excretion, at a rate proportional to the current concentration, so that they exhibit exponential decay with a characteristic half-life, and they go see pharmacokinetics. Um, this is not true for alcohol, however. Typical doses of alcohol actually saturate the enzyme's capacity so that, the, so that alcohol is removed from the bloodstream at an approximately constant rate. So basically, other enzymes that do things, doesn't matter how much you throw at it, they're able to, to do it. I mean, that's how I read it. But alcohol, at some point, it goes, hey man, I can only, I can only remove so much at, at once. So everything's backed up, and that's why your BAC keeps rising and rising and rising as you keep drinking if you drink fast, okay? Um... It varies between now. Now, then you have each individual's different uh, gender affects it. Um, how much you weigh, how much body fat you have, how much lean muscle you have. Um, <clears throat> there can be also other things like how you know how much food did you have in your stomach when you started drinking? Did you eat while you were drinking? I try to make this so that most of the food is out of my stomach, so that the alcohol will react faster. Uh, but I didn't want to be completely like starving. Um, I mean, I want to have lunch. Um, Let's see, uh, persons below the age of 25, which says citation needed, so I don't know where that, I've never heard that one before. Women and persons with liver disease may process alcohol more slowly. Uh, false uh, high BAC readings are related to patients with uh, uh, diseases called proteinuria and hematuria due to kidney liver metabolism uh, and failure. And then uh, blah, blah, blah. We're not going to go through all that. Um, and then if, you're, if, you, if your culture or your ethnicity is not used to drinking a lot of alcohol, your body just may not have enough of the uh, enzymes, high enough uh, enzymes to produce the alcohol at a faster rate. So it may take longer to get sober. Um, and then <clears throat> rate of detoxification of alcohol can also be slowed by certain drugs which interfere with the action of alcohol, blah, blah, blah. Aspirin. Furfural, which I have no idea what this is, may be found in fusel alcohol, uh, fumes of certain solvents, many heavy metals, and some pyrazol compounds. Also suspected of having this effect are tagamet. They, they had the chemical names for it, so I'm just using the, uh, the common names. Tagamet, Zantac, and uh, acetaminophen, Tylenol. Uh, and this is pharmacetamol. Uh, currently, this is interesting, the only substance known that can increase the rate of metabolism of alcohol is fructose. The effect can vary significantly from person to person, but a 100 gram dose of fructose has been shown to increase alcohol metabolism by an average of 80%. Fructose also increases false positives of high BAC ratio readings in anyone with those kidney liver um, uh, issues that I talked about earlier. Uh, so you can slow your, you can slow your um, absorption by having a full stomach or at least eating at the same time. Um, 
Also, uh, spreading the total absorption of alcohol over a greater period of time decreases the maximum alcohol level, decreasing the hangover effect. Um, drinking a full stomach, drinking while ingesting drugs, which slow the breakdown of ethanol uh, into acetaldehyde, will reduce the maximum blood levels of this substance, and thus, thus decrease the hangover, which that says citation needed. I think those are those like you know magic pills you can get at the gas station. All right, so carbonated beverages also increase the absorption of alcohol <clears throat> uh, versus non-carbonated drinks. Uh, there was a study that used uh, champagne and flat champagne, flat and sparkling champagne, they said. I, I, I don't know if they meant like champagne that like they just let out, they just let set out for a long time because it said, <clears throat> which contained the same alcohol levels. After five minutes following consumption, the group that had the sparkling wine had 54 milligrams of alcohol in their blood, while the group that had the same sparkling wine, only flat, had 39 milligrams. Uh, and... That was just confirmed. I had always heard if you want to get drunk faster, make sure you, you mix it with, you know, carbonated drink. All right. So um, now how. So how uh, what's the average rate of um, eliminated alcohol in your system? I'm not going to go through the whole explanation. Basically, it's one drink an hour. And that's really kind of a, a really rough estimation. It's really closer to one drink every one and a half hours. Um, but when you go through all of your training, they always say one drink an hour. It's not quite that, but it's pretty close. All right, so now I am approximately 280 pounds. So uh, there's the, all these charts, and it took, I had actually, most charts start, stop at 240. Hint, hint, Mark. Um, but I found a chart that goes to 300, and I found a calculator that you can put whatever weight you want. I'm going to assume. Let's try that. I didn't, I didn't try 320. Yeah. You can put whatever weight you want in what your gender is, and then it has time from first drink, and then it will give you your uh, estimated BAC and how long it will take you to sober up completely, as in zero alcohol, not like 0.001 or 0.0001. It's like no alcohol. Um, so I'll have a link to that. Um, it's kind of a cool little thing. So what does one drink equal? One drink is a 12 ounce standard beer, which is around five ish percent alcohol, five ounces of standard wine, which really is around that 12 to 13 percent alcohol, not these California calves or 15 percent or a one and a one and a half ounce of 80 proof liquor. Boom. That's why I have this because one, it takes less time to drink an ounce and a half shot and I can just chase it with the, with the, uh, carbonated drink, then try to like drink all these wines I have at different alcohol levels and test all that, or any beer I might have in, in the house, which we don't have a lot of beer right now. So um, that's what's considered a drink. So what will it take in an hour's period of time to get me to uh, 0.08 or greater, um, which is pretty much the standard legal limit in every state in, in the country? Um, that is approximately six drinks. So six shots of this. Um, now granted that's, I'm not going to drink six shots immediately because that's, that'll tear up the stomach. But every 10 minutes, I'm going to take a shot and then I'm going to use this. We're going to take the reading off of this. So this is why it's going to take a couple hours. So I figure after the first hour and I'll keep taking shots. I'm not going to stop at six. I'm going to keep taking shots until I get to 0.08 and then um, we'll probably stop recording at that point and then I probably will just for curiosity's sake see how long it takes me to get down to zero. I have no plans to go out tonight. And if I do, dad's driving. All right, this is why I did it in the afternoon and I still have one more day of vacation. So any, and honestly, I don't get hangovers, but if there was any effect on uh, this cool. Now let me qualify what I mean by I don't get any hangovers. I don't get hangovers where I have pounding headaches. I'm sensitive to light and sound, um, and and I just I just want to curl up in a ball and die. Okay, I don't hang. I get hangovers like that. However, my body does get affected. I will have um, dry mouth. I might feel a little bit tired. Um, that's about it. You know, I'll feel I'll feel dehydrated. Um, might feel a little lethargic, but if I have to be somewhere. Boom, For, you know, I'll, my, my, I'll, I guess, psych myself to be totally fine. 
I can listen to loud music. I can be in loud lights. I can go out to the sun. I don't need to have the sunglasses in at the office. I'll be I'll be cranking up you know techno music in the car. It's okay. It doesn't. I don't get that type of hangover. And now when I was in my 20s, I barely even got that. I got a little cotton mouth. But now that I'm much older, um, I do feel the effects a little bit more if I had a lot to drink the night before. All right. So. Um, so when you get this, uh, you got to put the batteries in. You got to take the, the back of the case off. You got to put the batteries in, um, and then you just press, you hold the button to hear it click, or to hear it beep, and then you ha of course you have to have this in there, and then you're going to blow in here, and you're going to hear it make a noise that it's registering that you're blowing, and then you're going to hear you're actually going to hear a click. Um, there's a sensor in here. This is the other thing about this product. Um, I guess through these other ones that you have to send in occasionally to be recalibrated. This one does not require that. And they even give you a spare uh, sensor, which uh, is in a different box. I was like, where was it in there? Oh, I was about to turn off. It turns off automatically, so you don't, have to you don't have to remember turning it off to turn it off. Okay? So we're going to go and start. Hold this down. Turn it on. We'll let it do its little, little startup thing. I'm excited in trying this out. It says blow, so we're going to blow. You probably heard the little click. Now it's going to take it a few seconds. It's going to, it tells you to wait, it gives you a few seconds, and it goes down to the thousandth of uh, your percentage BAC. Give it a little second here, a couple more seconds. Wait, 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 wait. And it says 0. 0.0000. I don't know if you can see that, but we're going to do that. Okay, so. <clears throat> If I was smart, I would have done a little research on pinch. I just know it's it's a um, it's a scotch that's at least well known. All right, so do do do. We're gonna use my whistle pig tumbler here. Put that there. We don't need to keep those up anymore. And we're gonna take a shot. Salute. I tried to have something that was palatable. All right, kids. So, um, got my water there. I'm going to set my timer on the watch for 10 minutes. Oh, not that long. 10 minutes. Boom. And then 10 minutes, we are going to come back to that. I thought I had the remote somewhere, so I could watch some TV. I'm going to watch me some Doctor Who. So, a couple things. First of all, ooh, a little burp ejection. Uh, this, these are two forty nine ninety five or two yeah two forty nine ninety five. Hold on, let me just double check that. Two forty nine ninety five. Now you can They have other models. They have they have like one for like one hundred and forty. 
or like 150. I'm trying to get the one that was. I think there was one for like 90 bucks. One, one for 130. One for like 95. How much was this one? Come on, man. Yeah, 80 bucks. So they have they have more reasonably priced or, or lower priced products. The one that I have actually is their top of the line portable one. They also have commercial ones that you can put in your bar. Um, those are those look like they're like 1500 bucks or whatever. You also the mouthpieces you can buy a 10 pack for four bucks or you can get a hundred you get a hundred just like combined for like 40 bucks and then you also can get the individually wrapped for 45 100 of them for 45 bucks so extra five bucks you get individually wrapped ones so yes if you have a bar set up if you want to use this you could but you also have one that people have to pay it's a coin operated or or bill you know put the money in and then they can test themselves so I'm sure there's a dispenser for a mouthpiece and all that. And then um, the sensor for this, for this one's like 90 bucks. Now they give you a replacement sensor, so you already, you already have one of those, but if you have to replace it for some reason, after that, you, they're like 90 bucks. So honestly, it's really not that much money, especially if you, know, you do frequent the bars or go out you know, enough where you have more than like one or two drinks and you might get close to you know, getting drunk. It's a great way to, um, well, I'm assuming, we haven't tested it, great way to figure that out. So, it's been a little over 10 minutes watching Doctor Who. Um, let's turn this on. And let's see if anything is registered yet in 10 plus minutes from that one shot. I'm real interested to see how this all works because I've never done it myself. Wow. So, I'm at... 0 0.012. All right, so what does that mean? 0 0.012. That's interesting. All right, so 0 0.012, not there yet. So you have to be at 0 0.02, you may feel relaxed, might experience slow reaction time. That's from the that's from the website that has the uh, the calculator. Okay, so this is kind of fun on a personal level. So, pour ourselves another shot. Whoa. Now, your results may vary. I mean, you might be same, same, uh, uh, what's my call it? Weight as me, but you may have just eaten or you may have not eaten all day. Uh, you may not be drinking carbonated beverage, you know, whatever. So this is not a truly scientific test, but it's a, it is a test. All right. Start the timer again and watch more. Doctor Who, Doctor Who. Spend another 10 minutes and let's check it out. I'm wondering if you can actually hear the click. I mean, I'll know once we do the editing. Wow, 0 0.36. All right, so handy dandy chart. 0 0.36 is between 0.02 Sorry, 0 0.036, not 0 0.36. That'd be pretty bad. 
All right, uh, so 0 0.02, you may feel relaxed and might experience slow reaction time. I do feel relaxed. Uh, 0 0.04, your vision is affected. Not feeling that right now. But, <clears throat> here we go. Drink number three. Hey, the way this is going, I mean, I have to go beyond six drinks. All right, let's try it again. All right, so another 10 minutes. Am I feeling the effects of the alcohol? Yeah, actually I am. So let's see what it is right now. Point zero five two. All right. Point zero five two. So we're not, you know, there's another one that uh, had a little bit more. Had a little bit more. Um, there we go course the book of knowledge all right so point zero three to point zero five nine mild euphoria relaxation joyousness talkativeness decreased inhibition uh, for behavior under impairment concentration all right oh, it's time for another shot And more Doctor Who. All right, so it looks like I forgot to tell, set the timer to start the timer at 10 minutes. So I'm assuming I'm close to 10 minutes. So. That and I'm out of Pepsi, so I gotta get a new one anyway. And we're almost done with Doctor Who, so. We'll see where we're at. <clears throat> Blow into here. Point zero five four. So, I'm assuming we're not at the full 10 minutes, but even if we were close to it, we we're at 0 0.052 prior, so my body is metabolizing the alcohol. So we might have to bump this up to every five minutes anyway. So let's do a shot. And now we'll do every five minutes. And I'm gonna get me another drink. All right, so we're at the five minute mark here. And let's see where we're at. I don't feel any different. Wow, 0 0.104, I've almost doubled where I was before. That's interesting, actually. 
So, we went from mild euphoria, relaxation, blah, 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 blah. I do have a slurring of words right now. Two, uh, we skipped blunted feelings, reduced sensitivity to pain, euphoria, disinhibition, extroversion uh, for behavior impairment, reasoning, depth perception, peripheral vision, glare recovery, I guess uh, driving at night, <clears throat> to the um, next level, overexpression, boisterousness, possibility of nausea and vomiting, best from point. 100 to 0.199. That's like a really big range. Reflexes, as far as um, impairment, reflexes, reaction time, gross motor control, staggering, slurred speech, temp uh, temporary erectile dysfunction. I'm not going to test that. Let's see what the other one says. So at 0 0.08, your coordination decreases and your driving skills are impaired. This is the legal drinking limit. You are legally intoxicated and it's illegal to drive in the U.S., Point zero, I'm sorry, point one zero. Your speech may become slurred. Loss of coordination and judgment. Dad, am I, is my speech slurred? Is my speech slurred, Dad? Yep. Dad confirms my speech is slurred. All right, so we're going to do this just for shits and giggles. Oh, impairment of judgment. We're going to do one more. One because there was just a, such a short period of time. And I know my speech is slurred, too. I can hear it. I can feel it. We're going to do one more, and we're going to do 10 minutes, and then we're going to do the thing, and then this experiment should be over. All right, so it's been another 10 minutes, and I don't feel different. So let's see where we're at. Point zero 0.07. So, I mean, I'm going to just say that for the most part, this this uh, device is probably doing its job. Um, considering that that one in interval, I did not do the timer. I had no idea if I was at 10 minutes or not. I thought it was pretty close. And then the five minute, really short, was able to uh, do that. I'm gonna say as of right now, the device does its job. So if you're looking for something that will give you a good approximation of how much alcohol, alcohol you've had, um, <clears throat> see if you're safe to drive or not. Um, I mean, at 0.07, that's, that's taking pretty much a risk. Um, just because of how, just because of how all this stuff is, is done, it's time of rest, and then they figure out how much, you know, how much alcohol you had, and then when you do the actual test, if you do a breathalyzer, if you do a, the only true test is the actual, they draw blood. This is just an approximation. Forgot to mention that part in the beginning. Um, but they pull you over and then they take you down to the station, you do the breathalyzer, even if they don't do a blood test, how much time was there between time of arrest and all that, and depends on your state. Some states, you can fight it or not, but when you're at where I'm at now, and I can already tell I'm slurring words, that 0.07 is pretty close. So, um, you know what, 250 bucks. I mean, they have cheaper ones. They're probably gonna be pretty close to the same accuracy for like, you know, 100 bucks or less. If you wanna tr check it out, wanna buy it for yourself, especially if you get the holiday season, you know, I'm, I'm probably gonna keep this in the car just because you never know. And um, that's pretty much it. Um, this was actually, <clears throat> I mean, it was, I sat here for like an hour and I don't know, we'll see what the uh, audio recorder says. Oops. So I've been sitting for an hour and a half or so drinking for the purpose of getting drunk. And um, the geek in me is loving this little device. I think it's actually pretty cool. Um, but uh, 
If you want an endorsement, I endorse it. It does its job. I know how I feel. I don't feel necessarily much different than when I was at point one, but maybe a little less drunk, I guess. But I would say that my if you took my blood, I would be probably somewhere between 0.08 and 0.1 um, as of right now. So it's close enough. Anyway, um, clink, clink, click the links above to friend me up. Hit the donate button over here. Everything's all yellowed out because it's just like, you know, whatever lights are it's dark outside. Leave comments below if you like. Um, I'll have links, obviously, for the uh, Alchemate uh, and all, all the other fun stuff there. And um, we'll see everyone again next time.